Hello everyone and welcome to Neurosurgery Education. My name is Dr. Mamdouh Taufik, Neurosurgery Consultant. This lecture is the first part on anatomy of the temporal bone. It's intended for medical students, residents, and more senior doctors. We will describe in a few minutes the anatomy of the temporal bone, or more precisely, the petrous pyramid, using a new approach, the compartmental approach. This video is based on our work published in 2019. The temporal bone is a complex area that has complex shape and many contents, such as bones, muscles, canals, and foramina, as well as blood vessels and nerves. In this figure is a superior view of the middle cranial fossa located between the sphenoid ridge anteriorly and the petrous ridge posteriorly. The region of interest in the posterior part of the middle fossa on the petrous pyramid which is pyramidal in shape, separating the middle and posterior cranial fossa. It's a crowded area, so we need to simplify its anatomy. On the left is a photo of the Giza pyramid with four walls as well as the base. On the other hand, the Petrus pyramid has only three walls and the base. The superior surface faces the middle fossa, the posterior surface faces the posterior fossa, and the inferior surface faces the neck. The base, on the other hand, is facing laterally. On the left, a pyramid is shown. Now its tip is lost, making part of the wall of the foramen lacerum. Now putting it in anatomical position with its superior surface facing the middle fossa. We will create together a mental map, which is simple, holistic, and to allow you to progressively add more anatomical details and applications. The Petrus pyramid can be described as being made of container and contents. The container is surrounded by cortical bone. On the other hand, contents are coming from the outside and can be grouped into four compartments. Starting the map, this is a superior view of the Petrus pyramid on the right side. Now starting with the first compartment, the mucosal compartment. It's like an extension of the pharynx in the midline. It extends posterolaterally with three parts, the ostachian tube anteriorly, the middle ear in the middle, and the mastoid antrum posteriorly. This mucosal compartment or mucosal line is lined with mucosa and filled with air. It enters the petrous pyramid from the inferior surface. It can be considered as the anteroposterior axis of the pyramid. Now for the second compartment, which is the cutaneous compartment, it's an invagination of the skin on the lateral surface of the head into the base of the pyramid. It is thus lined with skin and filled with air. It lies lateral to the middle ear. It meets the middle ear from laterally at the tympanic membrane. The third compartment is the neural compartment or the inner ear. It lies medial to the middle ear inside hard bone called the otic capsule. It is divided by the internal auditory canal triangular in shape in this figure, into anterior and posterior labyrinth. The anterior labyrinth is the cochlea. The posterior labyrinth is made of the vestibule connected to three semicircular canals. The neural compartment is connected to the brain stem by the facial and vestibular cochlear nerves through the posterior petrous surface. The fourth compartment is the vascular compartment. It's made of the internal carotid artery which ascends in the neck and penetrates the inferior surface, then turning anteriorly, medial to the ostachian tube, inside the petrous apex. The petrous pyramid is surrounded by cortical bone. This bone surrounds also certain structures, forming bony canals around them, such as the external auditory canal, internal auditory canal, carotid canal, and the fallopian canal for the facial nerve. There are some areas that are not occupied by any of the compartments, including the petrous apex anteriorly, the mastoid posteriorly, the roof of the external auditory canal, and the roof of the temporomandibular joint. This, these bony parts can be either cortical bone, spongious bone, or they can be replaced by air cells coming from the mucosal compartment. Using this map, we can move to describe more difficult subjects, such as relations of the middle ear. The middle ear is like a cleft or a royal chamber inside the pyramid. 
around which all parts of the temporal bone are gathered. Relations can be easier to understand. Anteriorly is the ostachian tube with the tensor tympani muscle above it. Posteriorly is the mastoid antrum with the whole of the mastoid bone behind it. There is also one segment of the facial nerve to be described later. Laterally is the external auditory canal with the tympanic membrane lying in between. Anterolaterally is the temporomandibular joint. Medially, on the other hand, is the otic capsule that makes important imprints on the medial wall of the middle ear. The basal turn of the cochlea creates the promontory anteriorly. In the middle, the vestibule is connected to the middle ear by the oval and round windows. And post more posteriorly are the semicircular canals. One of them, specifically the lateral semicircular canal, is going also to make an imprint on the posterior part of the medial wall. There is also another segment of the facial nerve that exists on the, this wall to be described later. Intermediately to the middle ear is the internal carotid artery inside the vitreous apex. The superior wall of the middle ear is the roof or the tegment tympani, and below it is the jugular bulb. Another difficult topic is the facial nerve. Its segment and branches are related to the neural and mucosal compartments. The facial nerve starts in the brain stem, passing through the subarachnoid space to enter the petrous pyramid through its posterior surface. The petrous course can be divided into four segments, meatal segment inside the internal auditory canal, labyrinthine segment inside the otic capsule, tympanic segment running on the medial wall of the middle ear, and mastoid segment on the posterior wall of the middle ear, in the mastoid bone. The nerve then exits the pyramid through the styromastoid foramen in the inferior surface to enter the parotid gland. The junction of the labyrinthine and tympanic segments is the first genium, which is the location of the geniculate ganglion. Another genium exists with the tympanic segment turning down to become the mastoid segment. All four segments lie inside bony canals, the metal segment inside the internal auditory canal, while the other three segments lie inside the fallopian canal. Two major branches exist. First, the greater superficial petrosal nerve, GSPN, starting at the genical ganglion and running anteriorly parallel to the mucosal axis, medial to the stachial tube towards the foramen lateral. Another important branch is the corda tympani, running on the lateral wall of the middle ear. In a future video, you will be able to identify these components on dissections as well as on CT images. Please follow and share our YouTube channel and Facebook page. See you soon on your surgery education. Thank you.